Picking a power supply can seem like a daunting task. I get it. I think we've all been there at some point, at least for our first build. How many watts do I need? Does efficiency matter? What about size? That's why this video exists, and we've partnered with Be Quiet to explain these factors and make your decision just a bit easier. So the PSU is a pretty vital component of any PC, right? It converts AC fresh from the wall into DC and splits power on rails to fuel the various components in a rig. And while the marketing jargon can be a bit overwhelming at times, I'll admit, there are three key elements to picking the correct power supply. Size, wattage, and efficiency. Size is the first one we'll tackle because it's the most straightforward. A majority of computer cases in the market support one of two PSU form factors. That's ATX and SFX. There are several others, but mainstream uses for these in desktop computers are few and far between. ATX is a size you'll probably see the most, and that's because they can be used in most mid-towers, full towers, and even some ITX cases that support this form factor. The units look something like this right here. This is a straight power 11 from Be Quiet, and it's just under nine centimeters tall. It'll vary to an extent in terms of depth though, so make sure that the case and power supply you choose are compatible because some cases aren't very deep. A site like PC Part Picker will often list these potential incompatibilities as you go about selecting your components. It's a great site. I recommend it, especially if you're a first time builder, but even people who've done this before can use it and often do. We've linked it down below if you are interested in checking it out. But in short, most of you will be looking at an ATX PSU of some sort. Cases that only support ITX PSUs will often indicate this somewhere on their product pages, so keep a lookout. Now on to wattages. How many watts does your system need? And well, actually PC Power Picker can be pretty good for that as well. After selecting all of your components, you'll see a wattage estimation in the top right hand corner. There are several sites that'll do this, but we'll stick with PC Power Picker. We talked about it earlier. It'll give you a good idea of where you should be aiming. Another reliable way to calculate load wattage is with the Be Quiet PSU calculator. Simply input your system specs and the site will use those parameters to determine which of their PSUs are most optimal. Using the same system we built in PC Part Picker, Be Quiet calculates a max wattage of 301 watts, and from here you can designate whether you prefer ATX or SFX units, and whether you prefer a modular or non-modular design. I've linked it down below if you're interested in checking it out. You can also reference TDPs, though these metrics do not indicate specific power requirements under load. In fact, TDPs often a slight underestimation of peak power draw because of what the metric is actually attempting to do. It's more or less for coolers. It's a thermal principle, not necessarily a power draw principle, although they are related. A safe bet I've discussed in the past is multiplying primary product TDPs by a safety factor of 1.5. Consider an 8600K from Intel. That TDP is 95 watts. Multiply this by 1.5 to account for the occasional power spike, manual overclocks, MCE, whatever else you might be doing with a chip. It's just, again, a buffer. This will also partially account for other components in your system that consume less power, like your motherboard, storage drives, and fans. Now add this product here, 143, to the product of our GPU's TDP and the same safety factor. If we consider a standard 1660 Ti, for example, that'll put us at 180 watts. The sum of 143 and 180 is 323 watts. Note that this is pretty close to what PC Part Picker says. And now we can multiply this by another 1.5 safety factor, which accounts for a power supply's efficiency curve. More on this later. That puts us at 485 watts, which we can safely round up to 500 watts. And there we go. For this system, I'd recommend a 500 watt power supply. Now, sure, we could go higher than this. I mean, heck, we could even go lower, arguably, but I've found that this little equation goes a long way for most builds. And once you've found your ideal wattage, you can begin shopping. Be Quiet hosts a wide range of units. I've got a few back there, the Straight Power 11 series, the Dark Power Pro 11 series, and the Pure Power 11. These units are more budget oriented and the straight power units throw a few added perks like quieter silent wings fans, full cable modularity, and a sleeker design. Beefier systems could benefit from those Dark Power Pro power supplies, but most of the time you'll be just fine with either a Pure Power 11 or a Straight Power 11. One of my favorite features about the Straight Power 11 series is the fact that there are no external wires stemming from the circuit board. These often trap and prevent fans above from appropriately dissipating heat. And while some PSUs have fans that turn off at idle, Be Quiet opts to keep fans running at all times since PSUs are always releasing heat. This is where Silent Wings fans come into play. You'd never even know they were turning. Just small details like this you may want to look into for your next Next power supply. So let's assume for the sake of argument that you've got your mind set on, I'm gonna pull this again, 
this 750 watt straight power 11 be quiet unit. A healthy middle ground that we actually use for many of our graphics card and CPU tests. We link it in pretty much all of those videos and we pair them with very nice custom sleeve cables from Cable Mod, orange and black accents, and the orange matches the Be Quiet logo. So at this point, there's still one more variable to consider. That's efficiency. Now, this particular unit, actually this entire series, has a fixed efficiency rating, so you won't have to worry about it if you've already made up your mind, but 80 plus gold in this case is perfectly fine for a vast majority of builds out there. If you want to be more efficient just to be even safer, you could certainly do that. There are more expensive units typically out there, but 80 plus gold is a good middle ground. Anyway, what am I talking about? What the heck is 80 plus gold? Well, the 80 plus rating system attempts to promote power efficiency with respect to load wattage, and there are several tiers to consider. You've got regular 80 plus, some call it 80 plus white. You have 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. The closer to titanium, titanium you get, the more efficient your PSU is at that predetermined power load. At 80 plus efficiency, the PSU in question must be 80% efficient at 20%, 50%, and 100% power loads. So for a 500 watt unit like this Pure Power 11, it would need to be 80% efficient at 100, 250, and 500 watt loads. The resulting power input from the wall would need to be higher than this value, by the way, and we can calculate this by dividing the load by the efficiency. So. PSU efficiency equals output power, that's the power that's sent to your components, divided by input power, that's the power pulled from the wall. But this Pure Power 11 has an 80 plus gold rating, and the gold standard requires 87% efficiency at both 20% and 100% loads, and 90% efficiency at a 50% load. So you can see why a higher efficiency rating would be more desirable. The more efficient the power supply, the smaller the ratio between power pulled from the wall and power sent to your components. More efficient units can actually save you small amounts of money in the long run each month on your power bill as a result, assuming you use your PC quite a bit for gaming or whatever. They also tend to be built a bit better since more expensive and cutting edge capacitors, transformers, and the like are required to maintain said efficiency standard. And this ties back into what I said earlier about that second 1.5 safety factor multiple. Power supplies are most efficient at around 50% load, so you'll always want a power supply capable of outputting a higher wattage than your system's base requirement. You don't wanna be you know, using a 300 watt power supply with a system that pulls roughly 300 watts from the wall under load. Likewise, you don't wanna pair a 3000 watt unit with a system that's only gonna pull 100 watts from the wall. Most people think this is okay, but it's actually not. If a power supply is barely outputting any power and its you know, wattage rating is really high, then that can also be extremely strenuous on the power supply. You can calculate the ideal wattage more specifically if you'd like, but I found that 1.5 is pretty consistent for most builds out there, and that's why I've stuck with it for several years. I've even talked about it in this video right here. By the way, the great thing about Be Quiet power supplies is that even their lower end units, like the Pure Power 11 I have here, boasts an 80 plus gold rating. Sure, they aren't the cheapest units on the market. I mean, Be Quiet's not claiming that they are, but this is one area of your next build where I really don't recommend you cheap out. It's super easy to just opt for a $20 or $30 unit that's not even 80 plus efficient. And uh, yeah, if that thing dies, you could take the rest of your system with it. And, and that's, that's scary because <laughs> Replacing a power supply is pretty cheap for the most part when seen in the context of your entire build. Now with that said, you can find these power supplies linked below if you're interested. I have used Be Quiet power supplies for a long time. I do recommend them. That's why I had no problem with them sponsoring this informative video. If you guys like this one, hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.